Hey, it's Yazi, and I know I've been procrastinating this video mainly because I have had to reread every single card, and it's just a lot of time making these videos. I've also been playing a lot of drafts with friends and everything, so that's why there wasn't a video up on the weekend. So we'll get straight into the rulings for the ninja, the warrior, and the generic cards as well, because I feel like I can fit everything in this, and then start making some proper content again. The cats see the wanderer. 4 intellect 40 health hero with the effect once per turn, when an attack action card you control hits, you may discard a card with zero cost. If you do, search your deck for a card with combo, banish it face up, shuffle your deck, then you may play it this turn. The main thing to look at this when you read this card is the fact that it has to be an attack action card that hits. It can't be your weapon that hits, so you can gain the effect. I've made this mistake and I made it in my video as well. And I'm apologizing that it now. The other thing is that it says that it banishes it face up. If you choose not to use it this turn, it just stays banished face up. There is some pot, like, there is some benefits to keeping ba some cards banished, which could be just trying to mill out your deck so you have better cards. A few people ask what happens if you don't use it, and it just stays banished, plain and simple. Harmonized Kodachi is the ninja weapon that's a one handed dagger, so you can equip two of them. And the effect that a few people have been pondering about is if you have a card in your pitch zone with zero cost, harmonized Kodachi gains go again. There was one person who said, hey, uh, what happens is if I only have one zero cost, um, does only one harmonized Kodachi gain that effect? No, both of your weapons do gain go again. Next card is Mask of Momentum. Once per turn, effect. When an attack action card you control is the third or higher chain link to hit in the row, draw a card. The main thing we're looking at here is the fact that it says attack action card you control is the third or higher. So you can basically swing with both your weapons if both those hit and then you manage to make the third card connect, which is a card from your hand or your arsenal, then yes, you draw one card. But it doesn't count if it's your weapon, it has to be an action card. Pounding Gale is a very simple one. It's a one resource, three defense, five attack, ninja action attack. With the effect, if open the center was the last attack this chain combat. Pounding Gale gains, if Pounding Gale would deal damage to a hero instead, it deals double that damage. This is the damage that would be after all defenses and all defense reactions. So if you're only dealing two, you're dealing four. Very simple, though it, I feel like it's something that needed to be said. The next card is one that's a little bit of a disappointment to myself. I thought it worked differently before, though Lord of Wind works a little bit differently than what I first originally thought. So, it's a 3 pitch, 0 cost, 3 defense, 2 attack, ninja attack, action. With the effect, if Mugenshi release was the last attack this combat chain, you may pay X resource points as an additional cost to play with Lord of Wind. If you do, shuffle X cards, target, name, Surging Strike, Whelming Gust Wave, and or Mugenshi release from your graveyard into your deck, then Lord of Wind gains X attack. There was two main rulings that I was looking at this about, where it says that you may pay X resources to do the following. When you play Lord of Wind, you declare the amount that you want to pay for the additional resources to play this card. So it comes out as a zero cost, and then you say, I want to pay, let's say, seven. So you'd pitch up to seven, or you could pitch a little bit past that if you go like three, like pitching three threes. But the next card, that'll probably get a lot of people confused. If you read very closely, it states, if you do, shuffle X target cards named the following from your graveyard into your deck, then it gains X attack. Because it doesn't state up to, it means that you have to have that amount of cards that you're paying for in additional resources for your attack in your graveyard. So if you only have five cards of those names in your graveyard, you can only pay an additional five to gain additional five. When this first came out, it feels like you know, everyone was just reading as if it says up to this amount, though it clearly states you need to have this exact amount. Disappointing, but still a very strong card nevertheless. Hurricane Technique, I think is the first card that I ever questioned. It's a two pitch, one cost, three defense, four attack, ninja attack action with the effect combo. If Rising Knee Thrust was the last attack this combat chain, Hurricane Technique gains one attack, go again, and if Hurricane Technique hits, 
put this into your hand. I think you can already see where the ruling comes into play here. If you add back Hurricane Technique off its own effect, technically, Rising Knee Thrust is the last attack in the combat chain. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. The last card that's in the combat chain is still a Hurricane Technique. So if you add this back to your hand, you aren't able to play it again and then gain the same effect, where you can add it back to your hand again and then play it again. It isn't an infinite loop. You have to play Rising Knee Thrust again to gain that effect. Next card is Flick Flack. This has already been answered a, a lot of times, though I need to go over it. If the next card you defend with this turn is a combo, it gains two defense. Because this is a defense reaction card, it means that the next card that you block with gains two defense, but you can't block after defense reactions. So it just means that the next attack this turn, if it's a combo card from your hand that you're blocking with, it gains two. So we'll go into Warrior. Now Dolrithia Iron Song is a card that I've stated a lot of times in the past how it works, though I'm putting everything into the one video so everyone can understand. Once per turn effect, when your weapon attack hits, you may an attack an additional time with that weapon this turn. Note that this doesn't state that you gain go again, it just clearly states that it may attack again this turn. There are multiple ways in Warrior to gain that additional attack, if it be giving your weapon go again or having extra potions that give you more actions for that turn. Now I'll be looking at the keyword reprise and I'll be looking at Glint of the Quicksilver as our draft for it. So Glint of the Quicksilver, target attack gains go again. Reprise, if the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand this chain link, draw one card. The ruling that came up, which is I saw at a locals, was that what happens if you play no cards to defend with and your opponent plays this card? But then you play a card to, as a defense reaction to this attack. Do you draw the card? No, you don't. When you play this card, it checks the field and sees if anything has been blocked from the hand first. It doesn't gain additional effects after it's been played. So no, if you choose to use a defense reaction against this card and not block, they don't draw a card off this. And that goes with any other reprise effect as well. Rout is a very simple card. To a lot of people who have played a lot of TCGs in the past, though I know a lot of new people are coming to this game. Rout states, target weapon gains three attack. Reprise, if the defending hero has defended with a card from their hand this chain link, you may return it a non-equipment defending card to its owner's hand. So if your opponent defends with a card, and you play Rout on top of this, you can target that defending card and add it back to their hand. This does take away the defense value that put into it. It would be a bit redundant to put this in if it still did gain the defense for it. I'll go over this one quickly, which is Singing Steel Blade. It has the effect of prize. If the defending hero has defended with a card from your hand, this chain link, search your deck for an attack reaction card, banish it face up, then shuffle your deck, then you may play this chain link. Just like the Katsu leader ability, if you choose to keep it banished, it stays banished. If you don't choose to play it this turn, it still stays banished as well. I just thought I'd like to go over this as well. Steel Blade Shunt is the last warrior card that we'll be looking at, and it reads, if Steel Blade Shunt defends a weapon attack, deal one damage to the attacking hero. So very simple, yes. You have to pitch a card to play this, and then if a weapon attack is hitting you, you may defend it with this card to deal one damage to your opponent. Some people stated, oh, what happens if I just partial block it? What happens if I, it still only deals a bit to me as well? Because you use this as a defense, you still gain the effect anyways, if it's a weapon. There wasn't a lot of generic cards to actually go over, so I'll go straight into the other ones. All potions state generic action item, and then they have their effect. I've had a lot of people who will play the card straight up and say, I want to gain this effect. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. You must place any potion you down as an action point. So if you place this on the field, you'll use up your action point and then it'll end your turn if you don't have any more. And then you can use the effect if it's an instant on any player's turn or if it's an action, you can use it on your own turn. The next card we're looking at is Pummel. It's a cycle card which defends for two with the following effect. Target attack action card with cost 2 or greater, gains 4 attack, and if this hits, the defending hero discards a card. All brood attacks state discard a random card from your from your hand, while this st states discard a card, and it states that your opponent chooses that card. So yes, 
If you get hit by this and it deals damage to you, you yourself get to discard a card from your hand, you too. And the last card that I wanted to look at is Flock of the Feathers and mainly to do with Quicken. So Flock of the Feathers has the following effect. As an additional cost to play Flock of the Feathers, reveal a card from your hand with one cost or less. Create a Quicken or a token with when you play an attack action card or attack weapon, destroy Quicken, then that attack gains go again. The ruling on this is when you play a card, you reveal it first and then you pitch for when you have to play a card if you don't have it. You do not gain the effect first to reveal before you pitch. So if you only have two cards in your hand, you're basically unable to play this card without revealing an extra card from your hand. The Quicken Aura, aura states, when you play an attack action card or attack with a weapon, destroy Quicken, then that attack gains go again. Note, this doesn't say you may destroy this, it just states it has to be on the first attack. So the first attack you do after creating a Quicken token gains that effect. It doesn't bolster, it stays, it destroys when you use an attack. I know this one's a longer one, but I really wanted to kick this one out real quick so I could start making better content again. I'm gonna go over what draft leaders I think are the better ones and also better cards to pick up for draft. And same as sealed as well. I promise to make at least two more videos this week as I did slack off a little bit too much last week. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video this week.